So let's do a really quick primer on what video editing software looks like. So again, here's a screenshot of Adobe Premiere with an actual short video. Um, I just pulled this up. It's a, it's a minute, 14 seconds. It's designed around this timeline. And so this block that I've highlighted in yellow is the timeline of the audio and the video. And when you drop video into this software or any software, it's gonna show you two sets of boxes. It's gonna show you one set of boxes here, which is the video, and un right underneath it, it's gonna show you the, the audio that goes with it. So we're talking about shooting a video, but do keep in mind when, when it shoots it, there's an audio track as well. And the two of them are distinct because you can unlink them. You can move the audio from one piece of video over to another piece of video. And that's a useful thing to do once in a while when you, you you grab the best opening line but you grab the best opening line in a in a separate video from where uh, you walk into the facility and so you sometimes move these things around all right at the top of this this editor is the timestamp. it shows you where you are looking on the video and somewhere there's a control that lets you move around the timeline and squash and squish uh, zoom in and zoom out and how much of the timeline you're viewing and on Premiere, it's actually this control here, but I almost never use that. What I use instead is plus and minus. So just pressing the plus and minus keys will zoom in and zoom out. And I, can, I couldn't tell you which one goes in and which one makes it longer, which one makes it shorter. After a while, you just get used to it. You just press plus and minus and, and your brain will do the right thing. So then there's this piece here, which we'll just call the cursor, which is pointing to where you're editing or pointing to where you're viewing Above this on uh, most video editing software would be the preview screen. So you can only see one frame at a time. And this cursor lets you pick which frame you're looking at. And the cursor uh, is often uh, in the software, it'll, it'll be where the next cut is made. Sometimes there's a key you press to cut. Sometimes there's a menu item where you have to go over to. Sometimes you have to change the mode you're in to cut. But mostly what you're going to do is cut this film. Somewhere on the screen, in this case, it's at the upper left part of this part of the screen, it's telling you where the cursor's pointing in terms of time. And so the cursor's pointing to the first frame of the entire video, which is 000. zero, zero. Right, that's the beginning of the timeline. And you can see some times across the top here. And it looks a little weird because it doesn't quite look like a normal time you're, you're used to. And that's because it's not. It's in hours, minutes, seconds, and frames. And so that last column there isn't going to go to 59. It's going to be hours, minutes, and seconds. So that works the way you're used to how it works, right? So hours goes to 23, and, and minutes goes to 59, and seconds goes to 59. But frames doesn't. The way it, it goes is, is there's a certain number of frames per second that your camera has shot. It could be 20. It could be 25. But that last that last two columns is just gonna show the frame number. So if it's 20 frames per second, which is a common format, then when you get to 19, the next frame is the next second. So this is zero, down here it'd be zero hours, zero minutes, zero seconds, 19th frame. And then the next frame would be one second in. So that'd be zero hours, zero minutes, one second, and no frames. And then when you get to the, first minute, that would be zero hours, one minute, no seconds, no frames. Usually you don't even have to worry about this. You just have to interpret it at the end to see how long your video is. Just keep in mind you have an extra thing on the end of a frame. So if you want to do five or 10 minutes, it's this column that says five or 10. Then there's often some controls. So on Premiere, they look like this. Pretty much only ever use two of these. One is select and the other one is cut. And the cut in Premiere looks like a razor blade, an old fashioned two-sided razor blade. And the reason why it looks like a razor blade is that physically in the old days, before digital, before video, when it was film, you used to actually do this process by cutting the film with a razor blade. And then you would tape it together with sticky tape. That is literally what, what the process used to be. And that's why it's called cutting the segment and, and splicing the pieces together. Um, that's what it physically was, and that's what this is simulating. All right, and then it's about layers. Right? Then the next thing you need to understand is video and audio processing is all about layers. And video and audio works differently between the layers. So the video layers here go up. So we have video layer one here, and then video layer two and video layer three. 
And if you moved the cursor to this spot, it would be playing video layer one. But if you move the cursor here or here or here or here, or anywhere there's a second layer present, you're only gonna see the layer on top. You're only gonna see whatever the topmost layer is unless it happens to be transparent, which is pretty rare. And so what, what you're seeing here is a edited piece of mainline video and then some other snippets, like I said, B-roll, that's sitting on top. And I didn't have to splice them into the main line. I just literally put them right on top. And so they sit there and whenever the cursor gets along, whenever the renderer gets to that, that moment, it's rendering the topmost video instead of this one. This one's just being ignored. The audio, however, uh, works differently. So two things you're seeing here. One is you're just seeing some replaced audio in the beginning. And that's really common when uh, you'll see this in the chicken basket video. I got the really good opening at the end of the day. I got him to say that to the camera at the end of the day, but he's sitting in the facility when he's saying that. And the video that I wanted was the video from the airport. And so I simply pick, picked up the audio from the end of the day piece and replaced the audio from the opening with that audio. And so that's what this looks like. It's different colors because it's different pieces. Um, and then over here, you can see audio clips that are on top of each other, that multiple layers. And unlike the video, audio doesn't work like the, the uh, topmost layer is most important or the bottommost layer in this case, audio goes down. When you have multiple layers of audio, they all play at once. And so this is just, you know, for some reason, doubling up the sound. So sometimes, sometimes it's useful if there's a really interesting sound that's going on to go and grab it a second time and throw it on top. It's pre pretty rare, but that's what happened in this particular video. And that's it, right? So you're just gonna go through and you're gonna cut these videos into segments. You're gonna squish them all together. And then when you're all done, you have to do this extra process that's called rendering. And the reason you have to do this process is that while on the screen, it looks like you've chopped up all the video, in real life, you haven't actually done anything. In real life, the software is simply grabbing whatever pieces of video and audio you've told it to and is playing it in the preview window. But it hasn't actually touched any of the original files. You can just think of this as it's created a, a list of instructions on what to do to create the final version of the video, uh, but it hasn't done it yet. That process of taking those instructions and turning it into the final video is called rendering. Right? And that's where you had to pick the format you wanted. So you can render this into you know, high, super high definition video. You can render this into medium definition or low definition video. You can render this to be whatever shape you want. You can render this to be an audio file only and ignore the video if you want. Lots and lots of options. Um, what you're looking for is 720p and 20 or 25 frames per second, one of those two. 